With season 10 bringing us a brand new weapon and a bunch of weapon changes, it's time for a new weapon tier list. What's going on guys? My name is Valued and today we're going to be power ranking each of the guns in Apex Legends in season 10. So you know exactly what you should be looking to grab when dropping in. The game is in a great spot right now with nearly every single gun being strong in the right hands. But the bottom line is there are going to be some that are just better at helping you win fights. So buckle in and let's get right into it. So starting off, we have our S tier, which contains the Spitfire, Kraber, Triple Take, Alternator, followed by the Rampage, Flatline, R301, EVA 8, and the Volt. All right, guys, so starting off with the care package weapons, there's a reason these powerhouses are so tough to get your hands on. The Kraber and the Triple Take are the same powerful long-range monsters that we all remember from Season 9, and the Spitfire and Alternator have reached brand new heights here in Season 10. With both the Spitfire and Alternator being more powerful than ever, this is the first time we've seen so many strong automatic weapon options from the Care Package. The Spitfire has been reverted to its Season 8 strength, and shoots faster, and the alternator has its powerful disruptor rounds back that shred shields with 40% bonus damage. While it can be tough to find these weapons, if you manage to come across any of these weapons, they're both worth adding to your loadout no matter what you're holding. Alright guys, with the Spitfire being locked away, the Rampage has taken its spot as the go-to LMG option in the game. This heavy hitter comfortably finds itself in the S tier with its high damage and long range. While the fire rate can be a bit slow, causing it to suffer at close range, the ability to charge it up with a thermite really adds to the overall power and flexibility by increasing the rate of fire. The Rampage definitely excels most when taking long range gunfights, having enough damage to down an unsuspecting enemy fast. Keep in mind that the lower rate of fire can be tough to use at close ranges, especially if you don't have a thermite to charge this bad boy up. All in all, this gun is great, and if you see one on the ground, I would highly recommend picking it up and destroying your enemies. Next up, we have the Flatline, another powerful heavy weapon with some of the highest flexibility in the game. This weapon might not be the best at anything, but it holds its own at every single range. With high damage and a great fire rate, this thing shreds at close and medium ranges, and if you can get the recoil pattern down, it's no slouch at long ranges either. All the Flatline really needs to become a top tier weapon is a mag, as like many weapons, it has a low base size clip. Due to its flexibility, this weapon can serve as a primary or a secondary option, getting a lot of work done in any scenario you put it in. While it can be tougher to use than a couple of the other options on the list, if you get a feel for the recoil, you will definitely destroy everyone you come across, so get into the firing range and practice that recoil. Alright guys, no surprise here, following up the flatline, we have the ever so present R301. This light weapon has been a staple assault rifle option since the release of the game, and it continues to be so here in Season 10. With low recoil, high fire rate, and great damage, this might be one of the easiest guns to consistently land shots with in the game. While its lower damage can suffer at times in close range fights against SMGs or shotties, this thing is a laser and can absolutely map any target out of cover. Due to this, it remains a great option as a primary weapon here in Season 10. Moving on, we have the first shotty on the list, and that's the EVA 8. Even after some nerfs to the shotty bolt fire rate increase, this is still the easiest shotty to hit shots with and land consistent damage. While it might not have as much range as some of its fellow pellet shooters, it has great damage and fire rate that makes it the most forgiving of all the shotgun options in the game. We all know how strong the EVA 8 has been, and here in Season 10, it looks to still be a great shotgun option, even after the nerfs. Not only finding itself in the S tier, but also back into the ground loot in general, we have the Prowler. This thing has been locked away in the care package, but finally, it's back on the ground, and that means it's way more common. While it has a slower burst fire time and can't select fire the way it was in the care package, the Prowler is back to being a strong, user-friendly SMG option. The 5 round burst makes the recoil and aiming very forgiving, and with its heavy ammo type, it does a lot of damage. Add onto that the strong hip fire, and we have a heavy SMG back in the game that feels great to pick up. If you've been struggling with the R99 or the Volt and feel like mixing it up, the Prowler is one of the best secondary options in the game. 
And rounding out the S tier, no surprise here, we have our favorite energy SMG, the Volt. Being an SMG, it has great fire rate and damage, but what makes this weapon special is how accurate it is. Unlike the other SMG options, the Volt has very little recoil and its energy ammo makes it have low bullet drop. If you come across enough energy ammo to keep this weapon going, it's incredibly strong as a secondary option and probably the most flexible close range gun in the game. All right, guys, moving on to the A tier, we have the G7 Scout, L-Star, Wingman, Mastiff, Peacekeeper, and R99. And to start, we have the G7 Scout. This light weapon has been a strong marksman rifle pick for a long time, and it remains a powerful option here in season 10. It's also back to using a sniper stock, and this smooths out its loot progression as standard stocks can be a hot commodity. And with the stocks now having reload speed attached to them, this weapon has had a bit of an easier time increasing its stats without having to fight for so many attachments. If you're looking for a reliable, accurate, long-range weapon that feels like a lightweight sniper, the Scout is a great pickup. Next up, finally receiving the love it deserved this season, we have the L-Star, also finding its way into our A tier. This weapon can finally have more than two attachments, gaining the option to equip a barrel stabe and an energy mag. The barrel stabilizer is a great addition, giving the weapon some much needed recoil control and making it viable in long range gunfights. The bigger change, however, is the addition of the mag. If you have a high level magazine and you can manage the weapon's overheat mechanic, this thing can literally shoot until you run out of ammo with very short pauses to reset the overheat. Even after some minor hipfire nerfs, it's still great at close range and now has the accuracy and clip size to take gunfights with some of the best weapons in the game. And it's great to see another powerful energy weapon in the game that doesn't require a turbocharger. All right, guys, moving on, we have the trusty wingman. While it isn't the super broken one size fits all weapon that it once was, if you land your shots, this thing will still pump damage. The best part about the wingman is how very little it needs to be a powerful weapon option. This is probably the strongest gun in the game without any attachments in the right hands. And it's totally worth learning to use for situations where you're short on loot, but still look to pack a punch. At the very least, it's a great gateway weapon into more powerful heavy options, and will give you a lot of power in the early stages of a match. And next up, we have the Mastiff, a great close range option that can deal a ton of damage if you manage to land good shots. This weapon's horizontal bullet spread can be odd to get used to, but many players prefer the Mastiff over even the EVA 8, who finds itself a tier above it. Both these weapons, along with the shoddy we'll talk about next, can totally be S tier weapons in the right hands. But the Mastiff's odd pellet spread can lead to some rather low damage numbers if you don't hit most of them, leaving it a little bit less consistent than the EVA 8. And this is also true for the Peacekeeper, which can be tough to land full damage shots if you're not incredibly comfortable with hitting shots with the weapon. The Peacekeeper has the added perk of being able to charge up to hit long range shots, but in most cases where this is useful, you should probably be swapping to your other weapon anyways. And just like the Massive guys, the Peacekeeper can do some serious damage, but it's just not as consistent as its rapid firing brother, the EVA 8. It has higher upside, but a much lower downside than the EVA. Keep on rocking the Peacekeeper if you love it, and it remains here in the A tier for us. And rounding out our A tier, we have the most OG SMG in the game, the R99. This weapon's high fire rate means that you can melt people if you're hitting your shots, especially at close ranges. However, this weapon has a lot of recoil, and the base clip is pretty small, especially with how fast this gun can empty that clip. If you can get some good attachments and really master the recoil, the R99 is very strong. However, due to this, it's a lot tougher to use than some of the other SMG options like the Volt or the Prowler. If you've been struggling to hit your shots with this sub, those might be some good options to try out. But if you're getting in your faces and hitting your shots, the R99 is an amazing weapon. And guys, if you're struggling to use any of the weapons on this list, make sure to check out the coaches over at ProGuys.com. There, you'll find some of the top players in the world ready to give you the coaching you need to master using all the weapons in the game. No matter what your skill level is, they have the knowledge to help take your game to the next level. The link will be in the description below. All right, guys, moving into our B tier, we have the Charge Rifle, Bocek, Havoc, and the Sentinel. 
And to start it off, we're going to talk about the charge rifle. This powerful sniper can lay down some serious damage at serious range. While it might not have as high damage as some of the other snipers, its charging mechanic rewards good tracking. And if you can manage to keep the target within your reticle until the whole shot goes off, you can put out a ton of damage. What makes the charge rifle good is the lack of bullet drop on its shot, making it very easy to charge your evo shields or just get some poke on enemies from a very safe distance. While it might not be a gun you carry for the entire game, if you're going to have a strong power position where you have a good vantage point, then you really should consider picking up a charge rifle. Next up in the B tier, we have the Bocek. While shatter caps might be bad on the weapon, lethal tempo and a good sight can make this thing very deadly. It gets a lot of getting used to as it's the only weapon of its kind in the game. But once you do get the arrow drop and draw timing down, you can lay down a lot of damage. It's a lot less flexible than most ARs and even some subs, but if you're good with it, there's nothing quite like slinging arrows until an entire squad is dead. Another deadly weapon that relies even more on its hop up is the Havoc. This thing is one of the stronger weapons in the game with a good clip and a turbocharger, but without the charger, the wind up time is just too long. Nothing feels worse than having someone surprise you and needing to wait for your weapon to wind up before being able to deal any damage. How hard it can be to find the turbocharger is the only reason this weapon doesn't find itself further up on the list. If you come across a Havoc and a turbocharger, it's totally worth picking up. But sometimes it's not just worth risking running this weapon and not finding one. Alright guys, finishing off our B tier, we have the bolt action sniper rifle, the Sentinel. This thing packs a big punch, often being referred to as the Mini Kraber. Its shield charging mechanic lets you get nice damage increase on your shots, and Lethal Tempo helps out with its low fire rate. However, even with Lethal Tempo, the fire rate is still pretty slow, and its shots are less forgiving than, say, the Charge Rifle. If you can manage to hit your shots, and especially headshots, the damage is high. But with the bullet drop at long ranges and the low fire rate, it can be pretty tough to get high damage output in the game. All right, guys, moving on, we have our C tier. This tier consists of the Hemlock, Longbow, 3030 Repeater, and the Devotion. First, the Hemlock. While the gun is accurate and the three round burst can be helpful if you have a tough time controlling your recoil, the damage output, or the lack thereof, is the biggest reason why it finds itself so low on this list. While it can be one of the easier weapons to use, it just doesn't have the damage output that the flatline has, and it's not as easy to use as the R301. If you're a fan of burst weapons or you just love the hemlock, then keep at it. But if you're struggling with it and you want to try out another heavy weapon, maybe give the flatline or even the rampage a try. Alright guys, the last of the snipers for this list, the longbow, finds itself here in the C tier. This is the hardest sniper rifle to hit shots with in the game. While it does have a higher fire rate than the charge rifle or the sentinel, the bullet drop can be really tough to manage and the damage can be pretty lackluster unless you're hitting your headshots. If you can manage to land your shots, with some headshots included, the longbow can be deadly. However, it often feels like it's just not worth using compared to its other sniper counterparts. Alright guys, another marksman rifle benefiting from the moving over to sniper stocks is the 3030 repeater and it finds itself just a little bit lower than the scout in the C tier. This weapon simply just doesn't put out enough damage in most situations. It outclasses at long, medium, and close range by multiple weapons in every single category, and it just seems to be the weakest heavy weapon in the game currently. If you enjoy the 3030 repeater, but you find yourself struggling, I'd really recommend you give the Scout a try. Alright guys, and finally for the C tier, we have another turbocharger dependent weapon, the Devotion. Like the Havoc, the wind up time can be really tough to play around, and the Devotion just doesn't feel very powerful until you have it fully kitted. If you can manage to have high rarity attachments in each slot and a turbocharger, this gun can do some serious damage. But it takes a lot of investment to build this weapon up, so it's not really worth it unless you happen to find one of these on a death box fully kitted. Alright guys, finally we have the D tier, and this is going to be a quick one. The weapons in this tier really have no chance versus the other weapons in the game. While you certainly can down enemies with these guys, they're not going to be guns you pick up to play with through the whole game. And we're talking about the RE45, Mozambique, and the P2020. These are just guns you grab when you need something off spawn to defend yourself with fast. 
You'll rarely find yourself wanting to use them past your initial drop, and they should be swapped out for more powerful weapons as soon as possible. And that's gonna do it for the season 10 weapon tier list. As I said before, nearly every weapon can be really strong in the right hands. But if you use this list to help you build your loadouts, I know you'll win more of your gunfights and more of your games. Let us know your favorite weapons so far in season 10 and what rankings you'd want to see different on the list. Anyway, guys, my name has been Valued. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.